In our last video, we taught you how to find and reverse engineer trace rate in CSGO. In this video, I'm going to show you how to call it. At the end of this video, you will have source code that enables you to trace array to an enemy and detect if it's visible or not, and you can use that in your aimbot. I spent days working on this tutorial. I reverse everything from scratch myself, and I had a project that was 99% perfect, but I could not get it to return the correct entity. What has happening was my structures were not aligned correctly. There are part of these structures that use VEC4s, not VEC3s. My main man, Cleon, is the person who figured that out, and so this video is all thanks to him. So thank you much, Mr. Cleon. In the last video, we briefly showed you in the SDK the trace ray function. Not a simple function to reverse engineer. There are a lot of things that come into play here. So we have a mask, we have a ray, a trace filter, and a trace. Now, all those things are very complex, and each one of them, almost all of them, have uh, vtable functions. And there's many different derived classes from those base interfaces. So one problem you'll run into if you're reverse engineering this yourself is you may get the structure correct, but you also need to have the vtable pointers correct for that exact type. That is easier said than done. The best way really to do that is find the constructors for these objects. In the end, I decided that rather than showing you my full reverse engineering method, I'm going to show you how to use the SDK to do this. So we want to call trace ray. So we need the ray T, we need the trace filter, we need to understand what the mask is, and we need this object. So to do that, you just search those up in the SDK. You can find C game trace, which inherits from C base trace. And that is going to represent this trace underscore T P trace variable. That's what class this is. Then we have ray T, and this is where these vector aligned. If you look those up, those are not vec3s, they are vec4s. That's what ended up screwing me at the end, because each one of these includes a W, not just an X, Y, and a Z. For the mask, you'll find that these masks are defined in the BSP flags header file. By defining a special mask, you can define, do you want your trace line to go through windows? Do you want to go through walls? What do you want it to go through? What do you want it to detect? And then we have I engine trace, which is the interface uh, header file. And we have the C trace filter, which inherits again from the interface. This one's fairly simple, but if you don't have these two vtable functions set up correctly, then it's not going to work. Basically, all these do are return these two types, which are actually just defined right up here. So what I've done is I've put together a base project that includes all basic the SDK stuff. And then all I'm going to show you is coding in this part to get our trace line working. So this is our basic internal hack tutorial. We have our CSGO header file, which is exported from our dumper. CSGO SDK, you'll notice this is the same from our entity list video, except I've changed the entity list to use the um, special padding method that we showcased in our video of the... Um, <clears throat> of the ESP tutorial that ESP Z1 made. Then you will see create interface. So in order to get the address of the I engine trace class, we have to call this function. If you look at engine.dll in Ida Pro, you will see that it exports a function called create interface. So basically what we're going to do is we've defined that function and we're going to call it to get the address of the C engine trace class. Because remember, if we look at this trace rate function, this is a member function. It's a this call function, and it's from this object, okay? And specifically, we want engine trace client. I believe it works fine with both, but this one makes more sense as we other client. So if you've done our function calling tutorials, you'll understand what this is. We're basically just typing a type def for a function pointer. It's called T create interface. T is just means for template. And then we define the function arguments. It takes a name and a, uh, a return code, which is not important to us really. For error checking, it would be, but I don't really care. So the function we're actually going to be calling is going to be called get interface. We're going to pass in the function pointer, and then we're going to pass in the name of the object that we want to get, and it's going to return that to us. So this should be nothing too new to you. Now, CSGO trace.h, this includes everything from the SDK that we need to call this trace function. Basically, I started with the different function arguments. We need a trace filter, so we have that. What ends up happening when you do that is then you need these the interface class, so you get these feed table pointers correctly, and then you need these uh, enumerator. So all you do when you're building your SDK is start with one thing that you need, and then add everything you need for that one thing. Unfortunately, for trace ray, you need a whole ton of shit. 
So you can just paste all this in from, from the SDK right on Valve's GitHub. Now for these mask variables, you can basically use, there's a number of different ways that you can do this, depending what you want to do. There's probably two or three of these that will work. The standard trace mask should work, but also this mask shot should work. Now C base trace, this is the uh, return variable from the function. It's uh, passed in by reference and it basically includes a start position and end position and some other things. But the function, the variable that actually gets passed in is C game trace, which inherits from the one above it. And this is the one that's important because down here it has a pointer to the hit entity. So if you hit the entity that you're trying to trace to, you will then this variable will be populated with a pointer to that entity's address. So this is the most important thing. All this stuff we're doing is just to get this one value. So I'm not going to show you how to put all this stuff in there yourself. You can go, you can just download this whole file and use it yourself, or you can go to the SDK and you can practice doing this yourself. Just pasting in one thing as you need it, try to compile. When it can't, IntelliSense tells you that it needs something else, paste that in and just keep going until you're done. Down here we see that I've actually defined the iEngine trace class, and I don't need to define all the all the V table functions, okay? I only need the last one. So these are just placeholders that are going to help align this so that this is at the correct index. So this is just pasted straight from the SDK, but then we need to call it, and it's a this call function. So anytime you're calling a this call function on x86, you do it by using a fast call. So you define it as a fast call, and a fast call uses the ECX and EDX for arguments. So you'll see all these variables are the same, except the first thing we're going to point in is the this pointer, right? That's going to be ECX. And this is just, just a placeholder for EDX. We actually don't need this at all, but in order for your function to call and return correctly, you need to have this set up. It's just going to, we're just going to completely ignore it. Last thing is the, the vector header, which is going to include our basic vector three. And, but this is all pasted because we need access to all these functions. If we look back at this function, if you just put void pointers in for these, and then you just indexed into the offset that had the entity pointer in the game trace, that doesn't work because all these things need vtable pointers that are correct. You could do that by finding a constructor and calling it yourself, but this is actually easier. So this is all just from the SDK, pretty good vector class regardless. And where we got into trouble here was vector aligned in the array structure, okay? It's inherits from vec3, but it's really, it's a VEC4. And you can see down here, they sneak in this float W at the bottom, which I didn't realize. But this uses a line 16, a line 16 post. And that was grabbed also from the SDK. And you can find those defines right there. So once you've pasted all that stuff in and you've got it to compile, now we can actually try to call the function. So to get set up here, we need uh, to get the client DLL and engine DLL addresses. So we're going to grab those here. Client panorama.dll. I'm going to do the same thing for engine DLL. Then we're going to do our create interface. We're going to do create interface equals uh, T create interface. Get proc address. And we are going to pass in engine DLL and create interface. And we got to pass this to a uh, H module. So that to compile correctly, we need to not be an idiot, right? That's good. Oh, first we need to actually define these up here. So we need T trace ray, trace ray, and then we need T create interface, create interface. So we're just creating function pointers of the prototypes we already set up. Get proc address needs capital A. So basically we're gonna get the we're gonna get the address of this function and we're gonna put it into that pointer. So now we can call create interface and we need an I engine trace pointer called engine trace and that's going to be uh, get interface create interface and then engine trace client 004 and we need to cast this to an i engine trace pointer so that compiles correctly now this string here you can find that just from searching in the in uh, the strings so in so this while loop is just going to allow us to if we click end that's going to eject our DLL and then here we're actually going to do a no I've actually put this in the wrong spot we're just going to put that above our while loop and then down here we're going to do if get a sync key state bk insert and and with one as usual 
and basically we're only going to trace ray when we call it, when we click insert. So we need above here actually we need the end pointer. So we got end pointer p local equals client dll plus offsets dw local player straight from our dumper and we need to wrap this to a cast and we're going to cast it to ent pointer pointer and we're going to dereference it once now in here we're going to do ent list p uh ent list equals client dll plus offsets dw entity list we need to cast this to an entity list pointer now we're going to loop through any list. We're going to do for auto cur ent in ent list, ent list objects. You should have learned this from our entity list tutorial. And then what we're going to do in here is we're just going to check if the entity is good. So we're going to do if cur ent dot ent and cur ent dot ent client ID does not equal p local client ID. We're going to get the i position of vec3 i position equals p local origin plus p local m underscore of vec view offset. We're going to do vec3 target i equals cur ent dot ent origin plus cur ent dot ent view offset. Then we're going to define our variables for our engine trace trace ray function call. So it's going to be C game trace trace ray underscore T ray C trace filter trace filter. And we want to skip our local object. So in our C trace filter, we're going to use P skip and we're going to set it to uh, P local. And I believe we have to just cast that to a void pointer. And F needs to be capital. And then we need to initiate our ray. This is another thing. So ray has a source and like a destination, but it's not really destination. It's actually like a special angle. So you need to initiate this correctly. Um, so ray dot init I position and target I position. Ah, can't type like usual. There we go. And now we can call our function. So we're going to go to our engine trace and we're going to do trace ray and we're going to do ray mask shot and contents uh great address of trace filter address of trace and then we're going to check that current ent so if the current ent dot ent that's a pointer to the entity right equals a trace dot hit entity and we're going to do std c out ent 0x std hex current dot ent is visible. I'm going to end that with a new line and end that. I believe that's all we need. Does it compile? It does indeed. So just to walk you through that, we have our pointers to our functions. We get our DLL addresses. We're going to get the address of this function. We are going to get the address of our engine trace by using get interface. And then we're going to get our local entity object. We're going to get our entity list. We're going to loop through all of the entity lists in the array. We're going to make sure the ent is not null. We're going to make sure it's not our own entity via the client ID. We are going to get the I position, which is just origin plus vec view offset. It's basically X is zero, Y is zero, but Z is going to be the distance between our origin and our eyes or our camera position. Same thing for our target trace, ray, trace filter. We're going to skip our local object because the ray is being traced from our body to theirs. And so that might actually intersect with our body and cause it to collide. I don't know if that always happens in CSGO, but it's worth doing it regardless. I've had to do it in other games. And then ray, we need to initiate it. If we go look at this real quick, it's not what you think it is. It, it gets a delta. It does all this weird stuff. If you don't do it right, it's not going to work. And then we're going to call the member function trace ray from our engine trace, which we got via create interface. We're going to pass in our ray, our mask. Again, there's multiple different masks you can set to make this work. This, I think I got this from some paste actually, but it works. Address of trace filter, address of trace. And then we're going to check that trace dot hit entity. And if they're visible, we're going to print out. All right, so let's inject and see if it works. We are injected. If we hide behind the box where we can't see him, I'm going to hit insert and we get no output. If I come out, he's visible. Not visible, visible. Not visible, 
visible. So there you go. It works. And that's how you do it. Again, huge shout out to Cleon. He spent many hours fixing this and helping me with it. And so thank him so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.